Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this after church tea time. We're very happy to have you. Um, I'm Yorin and today I'm in the company of Lien and Lisi. And we're gonna discuss um, this Sunday service on the topic of what truly is harmonious and feminine. Um, it was a beautiful service, um, beautiful sermon, and there is a lot to unpack. And so right away, um, I'm gonna ask you like, how did you feel about the service in general and, and the sermon? Well, that way, yeah. So for me, it helped me to be more confident in the journey because well, as they pointed out, and yeah, all these things here that indicate when you're closer. And yeah, I felt like uh, I'm doing most of these things, and some not, but I'm working through it. And um, yeah, that's a, that's very helpful and also really clear, like that it's not uh, very complicated. Um, it's just uh, you work through it. So. Yeah. yeah, I felt the same way. Um, I really like how Jason and Chrissy are very clear about you know all of the components that go into your harmonious twin flame union from the um, eight keys of the foundation of the harmonious twin flame union to the four pillars. Um, of a spiritual life and how everything kind of fits together. Um, and I really enjoyed also the end where they talk about, you know, compassion and going at your pace and um, being comfortable in the uncomfort or discomfort. So lots, lots and lots of takeaways, but I just really, really enjoy Jason and Chrissy's approach and um, clear communication about, about, these steps it's not just like a nebulous um abstract thing it's a real very grounded state of consciousness that um you know it's describable yeah i'm gonna say you noted the approach that it took and you both talked about um how clear it was clarity and uh, that's something that Fabian noted as well. Um, it was that it was very well structured. And what I liked about it is that it kind of highlights how um, this is a formula, how with the teachings, um, the body of work, Twin Flames Universe, we have a formula for changing our lives and our relationships and our Twin Flame journey. And, um, and it almost was like, um, scientific process of the sermon and um, their, the structure that right, they give to it um, highlighted it perfectly and and yeah it was just like even even in the card reading I found that there was these little connections between all of the parts of the service and it was like you know it's your situation um you have made a choice, um, you reconsider, uh, you heal, you take action. action, and, and for that you have support, you know, and the support is the body of work, like the, the eight qualities of eight keys of harmonious in union, the eight pillars, like you have support, you know, and yeah, it, I just liked that it was, it seemed, you know, seamless. It was very, I was very appreciative of that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the first thing that I noted right away. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Lien, you mentioned that, um, you know, you, you could like identify where you at on your journey because they talked about like, what is it that um, 
you feel that what is it that you experience when you're close to harmonious family union like, would you like to to go a little deeper on that and what did you take away from what they said there yeah well um well, it's mostly a feeling uh, when they mentioned it but i i noticed all the things i've been working on like like with patience like honesty respect all these things um yeah i just felt like all these points oh there i feel peaceful in this part and in this this part not yet and that i felt peaceful i was like okay i'm in this part on a good track and here i can work on so yeah that's really helpful to just like more like a to-do list you know like you're building a foundation and here oh here's this to-do thing this is not feeling good yet and yeah this does so um yeah what stood out to me is really committing and staying committed to your tv and yeah that bring brought me back to the car training too, like you make a choice and then you manifest all these things with this choice and you're invited to look back uh, to this choice. And yeah, sometimes you can like, oh, I just my to him and then you're not choosing to commit. And so, yeah, that's also something yeah, yeah to, to keep going with everything you're working on and to yeah, to keep uh, going in that direction of harmonizing and further. Yeah, like um, I like how they emphasize the eight keys of your foundation for your harmonious twin flame union, um, especially the respecting your experience part. And um, like you said, Leanne, you know, like I can identify places where I'm not there yet in myself. Um, because for a while I wasn't being honest with myself. I didn't know that I wasn't being honest with myself, but as things, as I went deeper and persisted, um, certain things were revealed to me. Um, and so now that's a choice that I'm making and um, respecting my experience. And um, Chrissy mentioned, you know, you gotta be willing to learn and be willing to change. And she also said a lot of people come to the community um, and they they just kind of are addicted to spiritual information or spiritual like receiving like a spiritual download but you actually have to um walk the walk of the spiritual path um and so i think for me like that's where the four pillars come in that um, they mentioned you know relationship with god in your heart relationship with your gurus relationship with their teachings and then the community and so you know, how how do I know if I'm approaching HTFU? It's like, for me, you know, all of those areas, the eight keys and the four pillars feel maybe, I mean, not like perfect union, but like very like stable in like for what they are, like where I'm at in that place. Like, I don't have to be in perfect union with God in all of those places, but the foundation maybe feels like it's laid in a stable enough place that I know that I'm going to keep persisting in all those places without like dropping, dropping off or, um, you know, having any like major gaps in those places. So that's, yeah, I can see for myself, um, you know, I can see where there's still deeper to go in a lot of those places where you know, to get into a, a place of stability. I think that that's what I'm working towards. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, I feel like, you know, mentioning the eight keys of harmonious union was obviously mentioning like the basics. They really covered the basics of the teachings. Um, but, you know, with um, the take action card, um, that Christina talked about and how they, how the sermon was built. It was also an invitation to ground into, into those basics. And um, I love that she said to really get honest with 
with where you are and, and when you are and even how you feel about all of those. Like for example, um, really be honest about that. Like, nobody can tell except you what's your relationship with God and uh, what's your relationship with the teachings. So how do you feel about it? And I feel like, you know, by um, regularly like coming into yourself and really asking like, how do I feel about this key of harmony stream feminine? And how do I feel about God? How do I feel about my girls? How do I feel about the teachings? Um, you really come into this, this stability that you were, you were talking about, this routine of um, facing yourself and really embodying the teachings and uh, taking action on them because you implement all of this into your life. And, and I think that it naturally brings the peace as well, you know, and you feel more peaceful because uh, first of all, you're honest, um, which is a big relief. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think as humans, we're, we're meant to change a lot. Like obviously we're, we're meant to ascend and uh, that's, that's the thing that we're learning is that um, it's okay to change, to reassess, to reconsider um, and um, <clears throat> ditch this, you know, pattern that Jason was talking about, about making very minuscule uh, change to your life. And so being stuck into a pattern for lifetimes, that's what we're learning to do. And um, it's so, it's so well balanced because you're, you're doing it with compassion, with, which is one of the one other key of uh, HTFU. And so you're obviously doing it with peace. And it's so rewarding, you know, to, I feel, to take action on all of that. And, and knowing, I was thinking today about how nobody's perfect on earth today. We're just learning, but like, being in that mindset that you're always learning and um, everything that happens to, in your life is always for um, the purpose of your ascension. I think it's quite beautiful. And I think it's um, really quite peaceful. Um, you can remove the stress of uh, not knowing what is going to change again. And you can focus on yourself and yeah, by focusing on yourself, you obviously focus on, on having more relationships naturally. So yeah, that's what, what, what I was feeling about all of that. Yeah, about change, I, I love the part where Chrissy mentioned she was really happy being with herself. She had that it's been, been perfect. And then Jason came in and changed everything. So that, that can, I feel sometimes it's challenging to people that they think they have it all good and perfect and that there is even more chase and more good stuff coming because that's that's also, I feel for me, yeah, I feel that's a very new part of Harmonious Union because you receive a lot more and there's a lot more chases and in very unexpected ways. And yeah, you don't know how, your twin family will love you, for example, or yeah, what's coming. So yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah, it's really important to just surrender and because you don't know. <laughs> so. One thing you shared, Yorin, about the lifetimes of healing and like, you know, taking min minuscule um, progress without this work. I really enjoyed what Christy shared about how, I don't know, it was Jason, um, about how when you do a mirror exercise, that's like lifetimes in that one mirror exercise, like lifetimes of work. And so, you know, we are on a fast track and that, that was really 
relieving to remember that like we're doing the work to heal separation consciousness in, in a way that hasn't been seen on earth before in this profound teachings of union yeah i do agree i feel it's also very new um and we are all learning um obviously how to have relationships i think it's been a common theme uh, for the past few weeks how to have relationships with uh, god house ourselves and each other because of this teaching and it's also the first um, teaching on earth that is grounded into um, heaven on earth. So actually making progress here, making change here, so that you can have ascension on this planet. And so, yeah, of course, it's going to be challenging and, and going back to um, it's okay to, to accept change and accept that you don't know. Like I loved that they said, we're, we're really honest about um, how messy it can be sometimes and how there are tantrums, but you always have a choice. And uh, actually it's okay to clean the room. It's okay to have a, a bit of dust going around the room before it gets out, you know, and, uh, because what matters is that you've made the choice to clean the room, you know? So yeah, it's definitely, um, we're definitely like leading the way into learning how, how change is okay and how it's okay um, as human beings to say, I'm not doing well there. I'm not feeling well there. Um, I'm not doing as good as it appears, um, but it's all right because everyone, probably everyone is going through the same things as me, you know, and, and then you, you can focus on the inner instead of, of the outer because you're not so focused on, on appearances and on the appearing good, you're focused on feeling good. And that's why this teaching works. It's because like you're focused on feeling good. You're not focused on how your twin flame appears to be on the outside. Um, you're focused on uh, on you. And and then magical, thing ha magical things happen. Like you feel at peace, you feel so much joy and boom, like you have someone to share it with like a partner, um, you attract them into your reality, you attract better relationships, but it's all your choice. And it's also a process that you have to learn, like you're not gonna be perfect right away. And that's why we have a mirror exercise and that's why we have so many hours of videos to, to understand that Harmonious twin flame union is easy, but I think learning the process of getting fear art and truly committing to your twin flame, um, there are complex things, you know, complex patterns that all of us experience because we're on earth and we need to unearth them and, uh, and clear them so that there is nothing in our way. And so when you really like, you remind yourself of this process, you meditate on this process, you are like, of course, like, I'm not going to get out of my peace to get everything I want. It's just like, I need to be in my peace so that everything that is natural to me, everything that I want can come to me because it was always there. And uh, yeah, I, I do like these aha moments of like, oh, that's how it works. So, yeah. So, is there any other thing that um, really caught your attention during the sermon or the service that you would like to discuss?
in depth. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask if we could talk about grudges versus boundaries, because Jason and Chrissy brought that up, and I felt it was really um, eye opening. Uh, because, in, in especially like in my life, and I don't know about in about your lives, um, how you know what what they said was like the difference between a boundary and a grudge. A boundary is an energetic or physical thing. It's healthy. It provides safety and um, space to maintain peace. And a grudge is like you're staying in an upset and um, you're like in a standoff. And they they had the example of the twin flames with the arms crossed back to back. And I realized that, you know, like I didn't know how to have a boundary without having a grudge until recently. Um, and I, I felt like, um, you know, the way to, to have a boundary is through compassion. But yeah, I just I really appreciate that we're kind of highlighting that because I feel that in the community, we're healing that in a sense, like, you know, letting go of grudges or, or anger is a boundary and accepting you know unconditional love but but having that boundary so that you have the peace to like move through things so i don't know what what about you all did that stand out to you too yeah it helped me also to go deeper in learning boundaries and i felt that at the moment you want to choose a boundary that yeah, you, you can just feel into it oh am i angry or is it like in an upset? So, yeah, I'm wanting to put the boundary from a place of screaming or angry, anything like that, or just, or uh, in its intention, oh, I need some space or safety and all that stuff. So, that, yeah, that's helped me to be more clear with um, my intentions when I want to put a boundary. Yeah, yeah like, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna share. Like, I used to like do what Jason and Chrissy said, and I would just, you know, oh, this relationship feels bad, and like, like block or you know what? I, I used to do that, and I didn't realize that you know that's actually very unhealthy. Um, and I think our our culture teaches you know it's a blocking cancel culture, and it, it kind of reinforces that behavior rather than coming to a place of union and harmony. Um, and actually through my volunteer experience in the Church of Union, um, through my relationship with the community, I, you know, even if I don't have contact with my twin flame, I get to practice those things in the community um, with other community members. And I, I've had, you know, my heart is just really warm having, you know, remembering the, the healing that took place among myself and other community members as we worked through like, um, you know, grudges, grudges to like having a boundary and the boundaries actually like helped us to come closer and work better in harmony. Um, and I feel like that that's another reason why having a relationship with the community is so important, like with this community, the spiritual community. So yeah, I wanted to share that, like that really I don't know. I know we talked about a lot of other things in the sermon, but that one was like ringing, ringing out for me because it's what I'm working on right now. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up. Um, I I'm working on it as well, and I feel like um, being so close to to a community um, also helps with feeling it. Um, it helps to to clear that block faster, and um, I would say for me, like one key element to um, differentiating um, boundaries and grudges is what Chrissy mentioned about like you know you have a choice, like you can choose to to go into the drama. Um, go into the battling or you can use to not partake in it and and then say like okay what am I feeling there like what's the thing to do there you know I, and I think it's really key for me um because it's like unlearning um unlearning patterns that we had um in the past of like you know, it's not about winning an argument. 
it's all about being right. You don't have to fight to feel accepted or understood or things like that. It's just going to create more, more mess to clean up later. And um, then as you, sh you know, you, you release that, like the, 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 the desire of being, wanting to be right, like wanting to, to win in some way. You, your intention is more clear, as Lian said, and, and then you can heal. And, and then the decision to have a boundary, um, the most loving thing to do, I feel like it comes to you naturally because you know your needs and you know what needs to be met in love because you feel the upset. And um, because we're not taught, um, I feel we already had that discussion, like Lisi especially, but because we're not taught boundaries um, <clears throat> growing up, like you can definitely feel like it's like putting up a wall and, and blocking people, but actually no, and, and boundaries, are they can come in so many forms um it it's subtle because it's like you you adapt your boundaries to 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 each of your relationships with everything and everyone in your life and sometimes it it can just be reassessing um you've reassessed your choices there and so you can reassess with the person and as Chrissy said, um, say like, hey, this is no longer what I need in this relationship. Um, this is what I, I would like to have instead um, with you, but I don't want to have, love is not about like cutting off relationships. Basically it's, uh, it's about cutting off ego. So if you can like offer a different kind of relationship to that person and they accept it and you find that your love has grown because of it like it's so much better and and yeah it's just like the core of the definition of a boundary is like there's always love there and if you feel any kind of grudge even though even if you're right in an argument it's probably not love <laughs> And it doesn't even have to do with, with a person. It just has to do with, with the feeling of that, of that courage that you're holding onto yourself. And, and that is not peaceful. I remember in TFAS, I think Jeff and Shalia said, um, do you want to be right or do you want love? I, I can't, I'm paraphrasing. Maybe somebody knows that um, source, but I just remember that. Yeah, I remember that too, like, yeah, this thinking that being right gives something to you, but it actually doesn't, only it, yeah, I feel like in the core of that, it's just wanting to be aligned with love, and you want to be right in that, so, yeah, you want, yeah, you, everyone wants love, so, um, yeah, and being right is just like, yeah, there's nothing, not much. Yeah, and I think um, what they mentioned uh, when they spoke about grudges and boundaries is actually like one of the eight keys, which is forgiveness. And um, that's something that recently I've gone deeper on with as well, where in the past, I believed that forgiveness meant that you pretended like whatever someone did wasn't true. Um, but that's not that's not what forgiveness is. I, I feel more like forgiveness is um, just letting go of holding on to the grudge or the upset or the you know pointing fingers and being open to move forward with the respect and boundaries in place and to you know look at the other person as a divine being that has the capacity to choose just like you do, right? Like I was thinking, you know, hmm, like what I want, <laughs> when, I, when I make a new choice, wouldn't I want an opportunity to enact that new choice in action? 
And do I give those opportunities to others, you know, with my eyes open with boundaries, but do I, am I a, a person who forgives and allows um, for, for growth? And that's, you know, that's my question to myself. And I, I want the answer to be yes, and I choose yes, but I'm still working on that too. Yeah, I feel like when you, when you, when you choose that, like when you choose to treat yourself and treat others as divine beings, like the compassion and forgiveness that we all deserve, like you feel so good inside. And uh, it's like, and another like core thing about our teachings is that, um, you have to let go of being right, not because it's about like giving reasons, you know, power to the other person, but it's because like it matters more to feel good inside. It's what matters. Um, and uh, it's also your choice. Like, are you, you can be honest with yourself, are you choosing to feel good? Um, no matter what, or, or are you choosing other things to have other rewards and uh, feeling good and, and feel loved inside is, is what matters most. And I think sometimes um, we forget the order of things um, because we didn't know before. And we forget that the order is, is, is God first and then ourselves and, uh, and then our twin flame, then everyone else, and then it's inner and then outer, you know? And so I think it requires to, to look at life and you look at yourself in a, in a very different light. And um, it's the light of like the forever student, like someone who's willing to to always learn, to, to always grow and, and not being so hard on ourselves, uh, which is part of compassion again. Did you have, I felt, I felt Lian had something to say about that, <laughs> sorry. I got compassion. Yeah, I was thinking that, uh, Compassion is very important because a thing is so new. I was thinking about how people usually have one, like one or two lessons in their life because they they are not used to this work because they base everything. Yeah, you used to be basing a lot of things on the outside first, or or and that felt really bad. But with this teaching, it's everything feels good and that's why that's why you can heal so much and um, that is also new so you can be gentle with yourself and then I feel that every yeah, all these eight keys have like a lot of lessons in them like uh, learning what it means um, and all time beliefs about each of them. And that's also a process. And I think you can take your time with the process, you know, baby steps, step by steps, is what Jason said. Um, and um, yeah, that's part of both compassion and forgiveness to to know that um you can be a spiritual baby and you can like take your time to grow and the only thing that matters is that you never give up on walking by yourself you just learn to walk with like earnestness and and joy and openness about the journey yeah. Yeah, I like how they said, don't rest on your laurels. And, um, you know, Jason was telling the story of how he, you know, they they had, Jason and Chrissy were both live students um, since the beginning of TFAS. And 
um, really worked hard, like really, really worked hard and embodied the teachings of union throughout the whole time. Um, and even when there wasn't any contact, like they were talking about last at the last part of the sermon, where, you know, what do you do if you don't have contact with your twin flame? What would you tell the other, the others watching this? You know, what advice do you have? And, you know, they, they went through that. They experienced that themselves um, to a degree, to varying degrees throughout TFAS. Um, and they did the work. And then Jason said that, you know, once he had come into harmonious twin flame union, um, you know, it was like there was a there was a part of him that wanted to like, you know, take a break or a vacation. And that's, I think, the you know, the challenge that that people who are on this path um, must face because it's that retirement energy and and Jason and Chrissy moved through it. You know, they they got to the other side of it and they continued to go on because the Harmonious and Flame Union is just, you know, the beginning of the rest of the journey and you go deeper. So, um, you know, that that's something like um, the the hard work isn't you know hard work and then stop it's work diligently and then your muscles kind of keep their strength so that you can maintain it um and i really appreciated their their candor and their um you know the way that they talk about their own story that is so healing because you know the the those students of the work who are in harmonious swimming union it's not like they snapped their fingers and got there like they did the work and it's the same work that we are doing. Um, and so that it just gave me so much, you know, encouragement to just keep going and, um, you know, stay the course and let go and keep, keep working on those um, eight keys and four pillars. I was going to mention that as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's funny because I, I think when most of us discovered the work, we thought it was going to be um, a very, you know, a thing that had a, an end, you know, like where we're going to have information and uh, learn a few things, then have everything we needed um, for our twin term journey and our lives. and. And then go on our on our merry way, <laughs> and and uh, never contact each other in this lifetime ever. And then you realize that oh, actually that's not it. And I like that it's uh, very well illustrated, but by, by the fact that harmony and feminine is only the beginning of things. And um, there is something after the happily ever after a life to build. Um, many projects to have, um, something to grow and to share with other people. And I find that so beautiful. And it's it's a it's a perfect transition with like what I wanted to say afterwards about like we had um, many illustrations of what commitment looks like. And um, they begin the sermon with by saying that um, communist stream union is really uh, being committing to to your committed to your twin flame, and uh, and the journey is also about commitment to to your path to yourself, co being committed to yourself basically because you you don't want to drop the ball on yourself because for the person that it's gonna affect the most. If you if you if you don't want to do the work is is you, because that's but these are experiences that are presented in your reality and and I've been going through that for the probably the whole journey but it's been very um, present in my in my inner work this past few months because I'm feeling through like healthy doubt and healthiest skepticism, I'd say, and just adopting for the sake of adopting. And I realized this is a pattern that I have. And this is why I, I don't have a commitment part yet because like the only thing um, that I'm doubting in truth 
is not my relationships around me or my twin flame or my family or whatever. I'm doubting myself. I'm doubting my power to, my power in God, basically. Um, it's like I'm given message and then I'm like, I don't trust it always. And so I think it's important to, to be patient as well. Did I mention patience? I don't remember. I do, yeah. Yeah, I do think it's important to be patient with yourself um, there as you as as you grow. And, and I've seen tremendous results, but I know the journey is not over. And I think it's a it, it's a very good example of like it's never until you've reached perfect, you know, with God, it's never over. Um, which doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that um, you've got to learn that it, it's always, you're always gonna move through something. And, uh, and that's, that, that's how you get to live. So how do you feel? I feel with commitment, it also speaks to like at the, how people have been thinking before that there is an end to the journey because now well, you're committing to something and then it's done and then you can't give up and then stop committing. And, and this is also new that, that you always keep committing to yourself and to God and to love and you're to blame. You just keep going and you don't settle in a way. Yeah, it feels um, yeah, it feels very important to remind yourself, like, like yeah, also what you're committing to, and not are you committing to love or something else? Is into if you're committing to something, it's you're learning to um, to see what what you're choosing. I agree with what you were sharing, Leanna. It, it's, um, you know, keep committing to the path is really the way forward and it is eternal. When I really um, started to feel into the eternity of this path, uh, at first I had a reaction like, oh gosh, you know, this, the, it's, it's something, you know, that most of us don't really, we can say, but we don't really take in. It is eternal. It's kind of cool. Um, but I, I really wanted to just, you know, say thank you to Yorin for being, you know, for sharing about like where you're at. And I experienced that too. The, the hardest, the, the place where I struggle the most now on my journey is trusting myself because of, you know, when you, um, learn of some of your patterns and they come to light and you really see them. Um, you really do take baby steps like a child through, you know, being with God and trusting that relationship. And so it is like, for me also, like about compassion and just being compassionate and patient in that place where, you know, I'm sensitive and starting something different and changing and, Moving forward, it's sometimes uncomfortable, but it's but it, I feel assured and and I am building trust in that place and that that's real. It's not um, it's not something that can crumble. Like in that place where you're, you know, really honest and um, in your own truth and standing in that place with God. Like that's real and that that is a real brick in your harmonious twin flame union. It's very powerful what you're saying yeah and uh yeah this is solid it's like um whenever i would doubt myself and then heal and and i was like oh god when is this gonna when is this gonna end <laughs> i've got i got this song from my native island which uh, which is called solid 
um, it's the same word as in English. Um, and it was like, okay, like this is a, a foundation, a strong foundation that I'm building. And it's like, you know that saying that prom wasn't built in two days? <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly like that. And and when I when I get this song, which is a really ridiculous song, it's like meant to be a funny song. <laughs> but it's taken on this all of a meaning for me in my inner work. And I, every time I get this song, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm building something that is eternal and I'm doing it and it's strong. <laughs> so it's really reassuring. Um to have these two little affirmations <laughs> yeah and uh it feels so good um the journey feels good i think that's what matter is i don't know why yeah like in the past i think i you know the analogy jeff and Shia make about like building the bridge and then only when that last brick is put in the middle then you can drive across and I feel like I just wanted to make that bridge like I was like I want to get my HGFU now and like I feel like I built my bridge out of like paper straws you know the kind you drink out of and it's like oh man and then um, recently in recent months you know I've actually like carry that heavy heavy stone boom but it's not going anywhere like i i'm standing on it and and it really you know those little it's not actually a small step because um you know i really feel like it's you know i can't go backwards from it or it's not going to crash and it's, it's there forever it's there for eternity um and so now it's like i'm in a sense like starting the path um not from the beginning, but in a new way. And it feels really good. Yeah, that's it. No matter no matter what your journey looks like, um, it doesn't matter. What matters is like your true foundation. And you cannot go wrong with like wanting to, desiring love and, and choosing love can never go wrong, so. Good, well, you know, any, any thoughts? No, I just feel like it's an example of the paper bridge <laughs> that, that it's okay. I feel it's okay if you want try out with paper first to see what it's like and then even if it's it, it doesn't stay then you know wow this is kind of the direction of our this is it and then you go further and go deeper in yeah building that the really strong mission. yeah if you really need it that's 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 okay too and it doesn't matter how you're building because every yeah every Harmonious union and journey looks different. There's the same core, uh, uh, yeah, the same core foundation that everyone, but everyone does it in their, uh, yeah, in their, yeah, in their personal way too. Amen. Yes, I love that analogy. Thank you so much. So the sun is setting here, um, feeling like we're nearing the end of our discussion. Is there anything that you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I wanted to ask if you could post that song, Solid, Solid, in the Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group or somewhere, or share it with us. OK, OK. <laughs> It's really like a, it's meant to be, yeah, we really dance. It's a dance song, but okay, I'll share it. Try to write my story about it. Yeah. So 
Thank you. Thank you for this amazing discussion. And uh, after Tristy time, thank you to the people who watched the live and, and chatted with us. Um, we're very grateful um, for this moment after the services. And um, if you're watching from YouTube um, and you've liked this discussion, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to see the, the different discussion that we, discussions that we have all week and also the service. So with that, have a good Sunday and namaste. Bye-bye.